Welcome back to our tune in to Trader's Nation. My pleasure to have with us here today a book author, Mark Chandler, making sense of the dollar exposing dangerous myths about trade and foreign exchange. Mark, welcome to Trader's Nation. How are you today? Good. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Good, good. Has the greenback really lost its preeminent place in the world today, Mark? It has not, even though many people say it has, and they say it like they assert it as a fact, right. but they don't really cite any evidence for it. Right. Well, I can tell you that in, in terms of reserves, it is still the world's leading reserve currency. Right. Back in, say, 1990, two-thirds of the world's reserves. Today, roughly two-thirds of the world's reserves. Right. Doesn't it drive you crazy when people state things as a matter of fact, and you know otherwise? You just pull your hair out when you hear stuff like that. It is frustrating, but the problem is when we're dealing with money, some people, some very rich, smart people like Warren Buffett, mm. Bill Gates, they say the same kinds of things like uh, uh, Warren Buffett's piece in the New York Times uh, last Friday, uh, Greenback Emissions, He's talking about these things, and these people are very smart, and they put their money behind some of their ideas. And that's why my book looks at those myths and why the book is, uh, look at these myths that we, we hold so dear. Right. All right. So why are so many wrongly pessimistic about the dollar and even the U.S. economy for that much? Yeah, I think it's, it's, not, I think it's part of, it's a good old American tradition to think that someone's eating our lunch. Yeah. You know, you think about the, uh, remember Khrushchev takes off his shoe at the U.N., pounds on the table right. and says the Soviets are going to bury the West. Sure. I can't tell you how many books I had to read in graduate school about the Japanese management style. Now, look what's happened to both of those countries. Russia basically committed suicide, yeah. and Japan has had more than a decade, a, a lost decade. They've got a shrinking population today. Right. Their debt to GDP yeah. is about 200%. And yet people, uh, so instead they, they go down, they say, okay, it's not going to be Russia, it's not going to be Japan. 1998, when the euro was born, uh, 1999, when the euro was born, people thought the euro was going to replace the dollar. Right. They've given up that idea. Now it's going to be China. I think this is part of the American tradition. I think that someone else is, is chasing us, so we work all the harder. Mark, isn't there a valid concern out there with, their, uh, uh, with the amount of money that's being printed? I'm told that they're never going to stop printing money until they run out of ink, and I don't know if that's going to happen. Then you've got the, the number of borrowing going on, the deficit, the debt. But isn't that cause for concern? Yeah, no, it's a cause for concern for yeah. sure. I mean, uh, the, the, the magnitude of the budget deficit, how we're going to be able to finance it, they're all important, uh, genuine issues of concern. Yeah. Here's my problem is, is that to go from U.S. has a big budget deficit to deducing what the dollar is going to do is difficult. You know, look at what happened to Japan. They've got debt to GDP 200%. Yeah. We're nowhere close to that. Right. And yet the yen is a strong currency. So I think that part of the problem, I, the story I tell people about these two boys, they're being chased by a tiger. Yeah. And one of the boys stops and puts on a pair of gym shoes. Right. And his friend says to him, you're not going to be able to outrun a tiger just because you got gym shoes on. And his friend says, I don't have to outrun a tiger, I just have to outrun you. <laughs> as bad as the U.S. is, the U.S. is in a much better place to deal with these problems than other countries. And that's really my point, is the relative aspect, not absolute. We don't have to make the good the enemy of the perfect. Right, that's a good story, by the way. I like that one. All right, so the U.S. dollar has been under scrutiny, really, uh, by foreign countries. We've talked about that br uh, briefly. Even the call for an alternative U.S. dollar, should we be concerned with that? Out of all the things that Americans should be concerned about, yeah. the idea that there's going to be a, an international monetary re change that the Chinese are going to impose it on us right. is, uh, is, is silly. It's not going to happen. Here's, here's one of the things why. why? China's not ready for it. China's currency is, you know, I think this, uh, I think of this, this smell test. Sometimes when I travel, I go to, I visit, you know, I land in an airport in a different country, yeah. and I try to get into the, into the hotel, into the neighborhood, you know, into the city. Right. And oftentimes I don't have enough of the local currency on me. So I, I ask taxi drivers, would you take the U.S. dollars? I have never been turned down. Okay. But can you imagine if you offered them Chinese or NIMBY? The value of that currency is nothing outside its own country. All right, so when you see pre the president of, of Russia come out and he's got this little world currency coin as a pro Type. Is that showmanship then? Is that what we're seeing? I think so. I, I say that, uh, you know, we can tell. Americans are very good. We can tell when our politicians are lying. Right. It's because when they start the speaking. Yeah, that's correct. Right? But somehow when a, a foreign politician talks, we think that they're telling the truth. I would draw a distinction between declaratory policy, what people say, and operational policy, what they do. Right. And what they do is a lot different, as you know, from what people say. And I'll tell you, give you an example of a China. While they've been talking up the need of an international monetary regime and all these problems the U.S. has, sure. they increased their treasury holdings by almost 40% in the second half of last year. They continue to buy in the first quarter of this year small sellers in April, then back to buying on May and, May and June. Right. All right, so let's, let's talk about that real quickly because uh, do you see that trend to continue or if it doesn't, if it stops, what happens then? 
Yeah, no, you're right. I think I think that uh, some people think that foreign central banks are just going to get fed up with U.S. policy and stop buying treasuries. Right. The problem is is that there's not a clear alternative. Some people say, well, the European bond market. What's wrong with that? Here's what's wrong with it. The European bond market is much more like the U.S. muni market. You've got a lot of small issuers, yeah. different issuers, different tax schedules, different issuing amounts. And so think about this. Ireland, uh, finally, after many years of not needing to go into the global capital markets, issued a bond this year yeah. for $1 billion. Now, that's plenty for you or me. But if we were a sovereign wealth fund or the Chinese central bank or the Russian central bank, a billion-dollar bond cannot absorb nearly our savings. Right. All right. And so to me, the depth of, depth of the U.S. Treasury market is one of the keys to the dollar, and there's no alternative to that. All right. So what about consumers in the United States? I want to move on to the consumers because consumer economy has been uh, an important part of our uh, how things work around here and the flow of our currency, but consumers have been contracting. They haven't been spending uh, as much money as uh, that we have. Um, but... I don't know if we're going to get back to a consumer economy anytime soon. There's a sting that's out there. Uh, that they're not moving the currency. Are we going to go from a consumer economy and slowly shift into a political economy where only the government's going to be spending the money around here? No, that, that seems like it right now, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I think that it's a little bit different. I think that this quarter that we're currently in... Yeah is going to be a positive GDP, okay. and next quarter is going to be positive GDP. Part of it is the government, but part of it is something else that's going on. Two big things that uh, your listeners should know. First is inventories. When the After Lehman failed last year, the consumer pulled back. That left businesses with a lot of inventory. Right. What we've been doing since then is running down our inventory. In the second quarter of the year, inventory drew down by another a record $144 billion. So what's happening now is sales, as meager as they are, are, are stripping yeah. production. Okay. And so we've got to, so autos, steel, and number of other industries like semiconductors have stepped up their production just to meet the meager demand. That's one source that's going to help lift the economy. Inventory is being rebuilt. The second thing that's going to help lift the economy is it's called residential investment. Okay. We stopped building homes, yeah. and as we stopped building homes, it acted as a big headwind. And now it's stabilizing, and that's going to the way that they calculate GDP is going to lift GDP. Okay, all right. I'm liking I'm liking what I'm hearing, Mark. Now, where can we find a copy of Making Sense of the Dollar today, Mark? Making Sense of the Dollar is available at, at Amazon. It's yeah. also Bloomberg is the publisher. It's available there. I have a blog yeah. called Making Sense of the Dollar dot com, and you can buy it through there. If I get any money, which I really don't, I think I get like fifty cents for a book. Right. I just donate that to a micro lender trying to make the world a little bit better place. Nice, Mark. Good to hear that. All right. So Barnes and Noble, of course, once again, yeah. folks, you can head on over there or Amazon dot com. Of course, Bloomberg, a great organization when it comes to financial news, et cetera. And, Mark, give us that web address to blog once more time. MakingSenseOfTheDollar.com. www.MakingSenseOfTheDollar.com. All right, there you have it. There's the URL. Click on that here today. Open up a browser. Get on over to MakingSenseOfTheDollar.com today. And, of course, today we have Mark Chandler. He's with us. Mark, thanks for your time. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're more than welcome. All right, there you have it. Mark Chandler, Making Sense of the Dollar. And there you have it. Get a copy today. Uh, great information as far as the dollar's concerned. Okay.